This is why the VMT Atlant is such a badass plane. The redesigned Soviet bomber carried the space dreams of an entire nation on its back. By Anatoly Zak. On January 6, 1982, a bizarre beast rolled out on the runway at the top secret Soviet Flight Research Center in Zhukovsky, 25 miles southeast of Moscow. At first glance, this perplexing plane looked like a giant blimp with a skinny swept wing aircraft attached to its belly. But, surprisingly, it was the other way around. The aircraft, eventually known as the VMT Atlant, hoisted a bulbous cargo container filled with secret Soviet equipment. The name was fitting. In Russian, Atlant means Atlas, and it looked like this refitted Cold War bomber was carrying the space dreams of the entire Soviet Union on its back. Big rocket, big problem. Six years earlier in 1976, the USSR began development of the Buran Reusable Orbiter and Energia Super Rocket, Soviet equivalents to the US's Space Shuttle and Solid Rocket Booster, respectively. But the USSR had a distinct disadvantage compared to America, geography. Without the US's enviable coastlines, engineers realized that the monumental size of the rocket and the Space Shuttle meant they couldn't use the country's railroads to transport rocket parts. This was the traditional method for delivering rocket components from the country's industrial heartland to the remote launch pit in Kazakhstan, but the gargantuan size of the Energo and Buran meant this was practically impossible. A Mi-26 helicopter lifts of two 134 airplane, 2009. Moscow considered building the rockets right next to the launch site, as was done with the ill-fated N-1 moon rocket, but gave up on the idea because moving an army of workers to the semi-desert, thousands of miles from the closest population center, would cost way too much. Instead, the Soviets considered every conceivable mode of transportation, including an oversized highway, a scaled-up railroad, or even a giant water skimmer with a liftoff mass of 3,500 tons. Realistic options were quickly narrowed down to air transport, but no existing Soviet aircraft had nearly enough capacity to carry such a large payload. The brand new Mi-26 helicopter could lift up to 26 tons and looked promising enough to initiate a series of gut-wrenching flight tests to prove that a duo, trio, or even a quartet of helicopters flying in formation could lift and carry the necessary load. But, during one of the trials, a slight turbulence caused ominous pendulum swings of the simulated cargo, forcing terrified pilots to dump the payload. With helicopters out of the picture and several existing fixed-wing aircraft ruled out as too small, Moscow decided to custom-build a transport plane large enough to carry the rocket and the orbiter. Today's world-famous N-225 Maria transport aircraft appeared on the drawing board, which, as its name suggests, could carry up to 225 tons of cargo, a fully loaded Buran orbit weigh just over 100 tons. Engineers at the Antonov Design Bureau even considered a larger aircraft, called Jericho, Heracles, which could serve as a flying launch pad for a large space plane. But the plane never materialized. While the Maria appeared to be the Soviets' best bet, its development was well behind the Buran and Energia, so the engineers went looking for an interim solution. An unbelievable alternative. Back in the 1950s, Myasishchev Design Bureau built one of the earliest methods for the USSR to deliver nuclear Armageddon to North America. The resulting 3M strategic bomber was a four-engine, swept-wing aircraft. The aircraft was powered by VD-7 turbojet engines, but its most distinctive feature was its bicycle-type landing gear, centered under a fuselage, with small auxiliary wheels on its wingtips. But when the aircraft appeared in full metal, the 3M bomber fell short of the flight range required to bomb the US, and the rise of the intercontinental ballistic missile diminished its designed purpose even further. During the 1960s and the 1970s, the 3M aircraft earned a very mixed reputation in the Soviet Air Force due to numerous and deadly flight accidents. The VMT Atlant had four configurations, OGT, 1GT, 2GT, 3GT, arranged from most to least weight. This configuration, 1GT, weighed 31.5 tons and carried the liquid hydrogen tank. Without the Soviet space program and its Buran space shuttle, the 3M bomber would have enjoyed quiet retirement. Because of its mixed service record, the idea of converting aging 3M planes into a transport version, dubbed 3MT, had its share of skeptics. But the father of the 3M, Vladimir Myasishchev, pressed on and went to work in 1977 to build five versions of the aircraft for different components of the Energia Buran system. The fuselage of the bomber, 
was stretched by nearly 15 feet to accommodate its cargo, its single tail was replaced with dual vertical stabilizers for better flight stability at lower speed, and more powerful engines, VD7MD, included an afterburner for extra thrust during takeoff. Still, the 3MT could not carry the fully assembled Buran orbiter or the core stage of the Energia rocket. But it could lift its major pieces, not exceeding 50 tons, which could then be assembled at Baikonur Cosmodrome. The improvised air transporter would go on to have one of the most shocking appearances in aviation history. The hydrogen fuel tank of the Energia rocket along with its aerodynamic shrouds had a length of 146 feet and a diameter of 25 feet. The diameter of the 3M fuselage was just north of 11 feet. When the aircraft began hauling its oversized loads to Baikonur in 1984, it became informally known as a 5B0NI001G0, a flying barrel. Getting the job done. The Buran rocket is installed using a Mate D-Mate device. NASA used a similar device to load the space shuttle atop a Boeing 747. In addition to the difficulty of controlling the unusual structure in the air, 3MT pilots had to carefully monitor the internal pressure inside the tanks of the Energia rocket itself. The loss of pressure inside the cavernous vessel could make the descent of the aircraft impossible. That's because the increasing pressure of the atmosphere at lower altitude could collapse the entire structure, likely causing a catastrophic accident. To make matters worse, the transport version of the 3M wasn't immune from technical problems that had given a bad reputation to its military predecessor. During one flight test in 1983, the 3M carrying the mock-up of the Buran orbiter skidded off the runway and got stuck in the mud. The recovery operation was apparently long enough for the American spy satellites to capture images of the secret vehicle, and the artist reconstructions of the incident made it into the Western press. During another flight in 1988, this time with a flight-worthy Buran orbiter, two engines on the left wing of 3MT shut down due to a fuel leak. Fortunately, the aircraft was already in its final approach, and the pilot safely landed on the runway under the power of only two running engines. Overall, 3MT made more than 150 ferry flights, delivering components to Baikonur from the rocket factory in the city of Kubishev, present-day Samara, and from Romenskoye airfield near Zhukovsky to pick up the Buran shuttle, which was actually built at Toshino Mechanical Plant and transported to Zhukovsky Romenskoye by barge. In December 1988, the much larger N-225 Maria finally arrived, and the 3MT was quickly retired. But the entire Energia Buran program would soon follow suit, stalling in the waning days of the Soviet Union. As many Russian aerospace firms struggled to survive the post-Soviet economic transition, the creators of 3MT tried to find foreign customers for their remarkable machine, including a proposal to 